Hello, everybody. My name is Amul Patel. You're watching Smoking Hot Coffee Show. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm joined with... Hey, guys. I'm Jeff Pelton down here in San Diego. And today we've got Kavan Segi from AdLive.com. AdLive is uh, one of the pioneering firms behind WebRTC. So, Jeff, tell me, what is WebRTC? Uh, WebRTC is like a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transfer protocol on the web. So, in browsers, you can uh, use the native JavaScript and HTML to have two browsers talk to each other. So mainly this is used for video and audio streaming right now. Okay. So so we can have literally video conferencing, webcam, sort of like what we're doing right now with Google Hangouts, but within applications, not in this pop-out window, but as right. part of a banking application, as part of an educational app. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. The, the idea behind the web standard is to make it part of the browser technologies that we already have, like HTML and JavaScript, okay. uh, that would, uh, like you're saying, it basically is adopting a bunch of the uh, what used to be flash features yeah. so things like being able to enable uh, to access your microphone access your webcam and then stream it uh, through peer to peer directly to another browser okay. uh, is the magic of uh, webrtc and, and what you can use it for is really up to you you can even just use the uh, the the data transfer you know the high speed peer to peer data transfer for other things than video and audio but gotcha. those are the most bandwidth intensive got gotcha, you got gotcha. you so like uh, if you want to transfer files you can do it from browser to browser which you're saying. Yeah, that might be really helpful, yeah. Very cool. And so uh, Kavan goes into the history of the company. Uh, they've been around for uh, for many years now, actually. And uh, actually, the company was formed in 2000, and he's been around in the web industry for a while. Uh, in 2010, they, he was able to raise a million dollars for his uh, startup. And, and they started building a similar uh, type of web conferencing technology, but on Flash. And, uh, and of course, uh, TalkBox being another one, uh, Flash was just very unreliable. And Flash, boo. And uh, and to say yeah, so it, it it turned out several months later, um, within that year, uh, they found that customers weren't really uh, responding to it, um, and uh, so then they pivoted to WebRTC, which was the new standard being uh, being announced around that time, and uh, you know they're, they're, he's happened to announce that they're profitable. They're a distributed team. All of their engineers are all around the world, which is really yeah, great. Yeah, we love to hear that. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, They've got some big corporate clients, uh, big startups using their uh, product. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of their secret sauces is that uh, one of their advantages, rather, is that they provide a lot of reliability and stability for the mm -hmm. streams. They have a, you know, like a group chat similar to what this Hangout is. Um, and they work well behind enterprise firewalls, that kind of thing. So uh, these are big advantages, especially for larger companies that want to adopt this technology. Um, as, as a young... Or as a small smaller companies, small development teams, it's a huge advantage to let these guys do the heavy lift for you. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say that. And and so, um, you know, as as we can see here on the screen, they've got everything from a guitar streaming uh, website to... Well, a I mean, the use cases you told us about were everything from education, like formal math science, to yeah. informal guitar lessons and, you know, music lessons, that type of thing, right. to what, gambling, auctions that yeah. need to happen in real time. Uh, me uh, medicine, medical, a doctor. Yeah, a lot of medicine, right? Like, yeah. We need experts through the web browser. Right. Right. And and so you may be wondering, like, why don't I just use Skype? Well, you know, if you are a startup and you've and or a pro and you've got an idea for a product, you don't wanna you know, you don't wanna disrupt a person while they're engaged in your in your app to go to 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 Skype or whatever and I oftentimes whenever I end up hiring folks from Odesk, I always have to tell them to go to Skype because I want to talk mm -hmm. to them and it's like the best thing to do is to really uh, really brand and build all of this stuff within your application within your workflow within your user interface and that's yeah. what WebRTC does and and you know these guys are basically helping build the stability and helping it easily integrate into your app and so uh, I think this is a fantastic uh, platform. Um, Jeff, as a JavaScript developer, is this something that you would uh, probably use in something that you'd build? Yeah, absolutely. This is a tremendous technology. Uh, the open source WebRTC standards are still very early and fresh. And so what these guys are doing with AdLive is kind of wrapping around all of that um, stabilizing it for you and you know really making it production ready today yeah. so you know as much as I would like to hack on WebRTC and play with it yeah. uh, it's really a little bit um, too bleeding edge I guess for yeah. me to to wrap my head around individually at least as like a weekend hacker I can't really get a lot done so right. with a product like this you can get pro uh, production product out the door in a weekend I think 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, right now they don't have pricing for startups really. Like, uh, you know, they don't have a freemium model to, to get your feet wet, but right. we're looking forward to that sometime down the road. Yeah, yeah. And he does talk about um, uh, it breaks his heart to uh, to not offer the freemium model right away or right now, but he, that's definitely something they're working towards. And I think uh, their company's going to explode when they do. Uh, I'm really hoping for Absolutely. that to happen. And there's some also exciting uh, announcements he's planning on making in the next coming months. Um, so definitely, guys, if you guys are looking for cutting edge uh, communications technologies for the web and, and web, web RTC in general, this is definitely an interview to watch. I think every startup should be looking at web RTC as another enabling mm -hmm. disruptive technology to incorporate within the user flow within the website. So um, very, very cool stuff. Uh, definitely check it out. And um, on a final note, please subscribe to our show. Uh, we are looking for subscribers. Every time our subscriber count goes up, it makes me happy, very happy. And uh, so on iTunes especially, if you're listening on your way to work or if you're commuting, this is uh, uh, definitely subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Please do. And go leave us comments and feedback and ratings and let us know how we're doing. Uh, if you want to email us, you can reach us info at smokinghotcoffee.com. Yep. Let us know if you have any ideas or guests that you think we should have on the show or topics we should cover. Right. Uh, in addition to that, we're also trying to improve our website, smokinghotcoffee.com, where you can come and watch the show every day live as we broadcast it. And then the yep. schedule is posted right there at right. the top of the website. Yeah, and so we're going to be broadcasting this live 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and so uh, definitely if you want to uh, take a break and, and just listen to other founders talk about really cool stuff, uh, that's what we're doing every day, Monday through Friday. And also join in the chat room so that you can chat with us, let us know how we're doing, and the guest, and each other, right? See uh, what the other smoking Hot Coffee uh, audience is up to. Yeah. Tell us more about your background, how big the team is, where the team is, and how you've got onto this, this crazy ride. Okay, cool. Well, uh, firstly, thanks for having me. Um, so our team is, uh, we're a distributed team uh, all over the world. Um, uh, we've also got a guy, uh, one of our, our head engineers, he's in a uh, German villa uh, based in Thailand. Okay. Um, and what this actually, you know, when we first started off on this, uh, this product, um, being distributed was actually what decided to move away from Flash. So I think in the early yeah. days, you know, we started in 2008, 2009. Right. Um, there were already people using video conferencing, uh, using Flash, but I think people didn't really try the, you know, this the, a proper use case. Right. Uh, right. But for us, because we were distributed all over the world, uh, we decided that, or quickly realized that Flash just wasn't good enough. I mean, it, it literally didn't work. We couldn't have a conversation amongst the team, okay. so we'd always fall back to Skype. And that's actually Skype had only just released, you know, uh, video calling then. Um, I don't think they even did uh, the multi-party video calling. Um, mm -hmm. But we had to fall back to Skype. That's how we did it. Okay. Um, and that's when we decided, well, hang on, let's go and try and create this technology ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't really know what we were doing, to, to be totally honest. Um, but uh, we had big dreams. And our dream was to create a technology that could, everybody could use in the browser. Um, we were talking to a company called Gips about licensing their technology and then putting it into a plugin for the browser. Um, and just around the same time, Google swooped in actually, but just before we licensed it, a week before we licensed it almost, um, Google swooped, swooped in, bought the company for what? about $68 million. You're kidding. Wow. Yeah. And we were like, I, at first I was like, I'm like, what are they going to do with it? And yeah. then these rumors started coming out about Google putting uh, putting the technology into the browser, okay. like natively in the browser, and that's wow. when we were just like, wow, that'd be awesome. Um, so they paid six, eight million dollars for that. They'd also just bought on two, uh, right. which was I think about one hundred twenty-five million. So I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask you about what your feelings were with on two, the codec. Now mm -hmm. they've open sourced that. This other web, you know. These are all so, enabling technologies, and Google owning both of them, uh, yeah, is a little scary, but it's nice that they're building it into Chrome. Yeah. Are yeah, they both so, open? Are they completely open for any browser manufacturer to adopt? Exactly. So that's what Google said. You know, this technology is actually very difficult to create. Um, well, one, it's very difficult to create, and two, there's only one kind of way to do it, uh, especially with video, video encoding. Um, so the patterns were a big thing as well, especially on the vo on, on the voice side as well. Yeah. So with yeah. Gips, they were getting a solution that was 
field tested, you know, out to billions of endpoints. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, they were already using it in the Gmail, in the, you know, the, the, the predecessor to Google Hangouts, the, you know, the Gmail plugin. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it was tried and tested, and they had all this, um, they had incredible engineers. Uh, not many people know this, but Gips were the company that provided audio for Skype. Uh, oh. In the beginning of the Skype days, and then then Skype, I think, took some of the engineers and and developed it, developed it themselves. Wow. Okay. Um, but you're right on the on the VP8 side. There's been a few. I mean, we could get into this. I mean, you can talk about this forever. But on the VP8 side, um, there are quite a few. Um, uh, they've they've been talking about, you know, is VP8 royalty free or not? Um, mm -hmm. Uh, at, you know, at the, currently at the moment it is. Um, what Google then went did is went uh, well. The MPEG LA, the group who uh, who runs H two six four. Right. H264. Um, Google went to them, uh, or they came to Google and said, "Look, we've got a few uh, of our of of the group." So MPEG LA is a group of I, know, I think maybe even a hundred companies who all have uh, licenses on H two six four. Right. Um, and what they've yeah so what they've done with with VP8 is they've gone back to uh, uh, MPEG LA and they've said um, MPEG LA sorry I've gone back to them and have asked them to uh, to pay a fee to uh, license those patents. Right. So Google's paid uh, we don't know how much but I would say a fairly sizable amount of money to say that uh, to get uh, an agreement from the MPEG LA to say that it is royalty free. Wow! So that was a big tick, a That's big, a, big tick for Google, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I would expect that number to be very, very high. What happened Re a week? After Re really briefly. Uh, so are we, are we, are we led to believe that Google has in fact paid the money to open source the stuff to make it free, open, almost like a Creative Commons type situation for the world, not just for them. Yeah. Is this truly yeah, one of the a Google that's doing 100%. good without evil? This is following their original ethos, would you say? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, Google's always. This is how Google works. Um, they're very good like that. You know, they've uh, all this money. Uh, you know, I mentioned they probably spent over three hundred million dollars on WebRTC. Uh, or some, mm -hmm. not, not too far away from that. Huh? Uh, but just to finish that story, Nokia then came out a week later and actually said, well, hang on, you know, MPEG LA may, may have licensed their patents to you, but you, there are also some patents that we own that you are using with VP8. Um, right. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. So it's still not out so of the There's words. a little bit of flux Nokia. going on. So, 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 okay, so the video codec... Mm -hmm. So that's still there's still some issues. There's still some legal patent issues. Um, well, what, that sucks. Obviously, it seems like all these guys are so fighting think, over these patents, man. It's slowing everything be, down. Yeah, it's and the the problem, you know, I'm not a video coding engineer, but the problem is, is that the way that video coding was done in the past is very, it, it's it's kind of an obvious way to do it, um, and it's a very difficult to find a totally unique way to do it. I see. It does things like motion prediction. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks at you know if, if you know the background behind me it's not right. moving so those squares are just stay the same and they right. don't exactly. actually get encoded. Right, right. Um, right. It's it's very efficient that way. So the guys who did it first, H two six four. Right, that's it. They got it forever and ever and for everybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So how does that? What does that work? How does that work? Does that ever expire? That patent is it like a fifteen year thing or? I'm not a patent attorney, but it's something like that. It's you know yeah. ten. Uh, oh, sorry, twenty or, or it's a it's a long time. Yeah, because I, mean, I used to do a lot of stuff. I used to do a lot of flash. I remember Sorensen was the big codec, and then the VP8, and and I just That's thought, right. man, and, and you know, obviously we we we've all known about the browser wars and QuickTime. You know, Apple's pushing QuickTime, and <laughs> Microsoft's got their thing, and it seems like video is the one big piece that nobody can agree on you know and, and that's right it's and, such a crucial piece that's why yeah. but mm -hmm. what Google's got in its favor also is the biggest video you know on demand video store in the world right and YouTube YouTube yeah um, so you know if they say look we don't we don't want to use h264 and they you know they really pushed the new standard the VP9 standard yeah uh, which I'm not sure if you know but that's going to be in Chrome or they got they're doing the final uh, Bits, uh, uh, bit stream freeze um, on the 16th of June. So, is that right? Um, no, I didn't know that. VP9. VP9. Is almost, okay. Yeah. And all the, all the legal stuff we've, we've discussed, you know, about 
HD64 and the MPEG LA, mm -hmm. it's VP9 is also covered in that. Uh, so the VP9 codec uh, looks really, really good, actually, okay. uh, and much better than uh, H.264, uh, and yeah. equal to H.265, which is the new standard. What? But what I think on, on the video codec side, so I think they're going to iterate a lot quicker. So okay. you know, H.264 has been H.264 has been around for ten years, literally. Mm -hmm. I think 2003 May. Right. Um, uh, Google's going to start. Google's going to, you know, with the browser used to change every two years. You know, Google's going to do this kind of thing with video codecs. I think and really just push them quickly, push okay. it out quickly. Okay. Cool. They, need, they need to have some kind of break because also hardware needs to support. Uh, so the hardware you can't iterate as quickly, obviously. But it's not going right. to be every ten, 10 years. It's going to be every year or every two years. I think BPA, BP9, BP10. Gotcha. gotcha. You know, you know, you said something off camera that I want to go back to, and you said something about does it matter uh, who controls it you know is it really relevant when, because I asked if all the browser manufacturers if they don't support WebRTC yeah. tell me more about, about bring up the bring that up again because that was really okay important. so I think I think the key here is you know who supports WebRTC and who doesn't yeah. so at the moment it is uh, um, Chrome and or Google and Mozilla so Chrome and Firefox right uh, they are two big proponents of it, and we saw interrupt between the two implementations about two months ago. Okay. Um, it's still not out on. Uh, it's not available, behind, you know, uh, to the public on uh, Firefox. Gotcha. Um, but it, that's going to happen. That's going to happen either this month or next month. Okay. Um, so that's already half of the market. Um, and, and Mozilla's really got what about fifteen, twenty percent, something like that, and Chrome's about forty-ish. Yeah, yeah. So they, they they keep referring to a billion endpoints and half about half the market, but it also depends on your yeah. target. So yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of our customers say, you know, ninety percent of it of their customers use Chrome, right? Uh, which means they've got a huge amount of coverage, right? Yeah. Um, whereas you know some of our other customers who work in the enterprise space, you know, their customers are still on IE eight, and they're not going to upgrade for right, right, forever. Right. What's uh, your What's your feeling? I mean, be honest with me here, man. Do you think uh, Microsoft's going to throw their hat in the ring here with the WebRTC, or are they going to do their own thing with Web, you know, Windows Media Player streaming or whatever? Yeah. So uh, Microsoft have thrown their hat in the ring already. Uh, they did this in August last year, okay. uh, and they came up with a new standard. Uh, oh. That new standard was CURTC Web, which is a lower level API. Uh oh, a new uh, standard. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't well, sound it's, good, it's, man. It's, 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 I think Microsoft deserves some credit here, I think. Okay. Uh, they've been bashed around quite a bit. They, they proposed, because this is nothing to standard yet. So okay. people do, um, you know, everybody should have a say. Yeah, uh, at you're the right. time it was largely yeah. At the time it was largely seen, they came quite late to the party and they wanted to change everything. Okay. So I think a lot of people, you know, got their backs up and said that this is just Microsoft trying to protect Skype. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the, their proposed API is somewhat different, um, and it's a low level, so uh, it allows a lot more fun functionality and flexibility. Oh. Um, and their argument is that let's implement it this way, and then you'll get middleware developers, you know, yeah. like Ad Live, oh. who, will, who will fill the gaps. Very cool. Right. Um, I like that. And what, what we saw is. Um, People didn't like it then, but people are turning to it now. There's a great post by um, one of the guys at Hook Flash, uh, who do a peering system, um, about this, and he's a big proponent of, uh, you know, actually going back to this old Microsoft way, um, just because it's more flexible. Yeah. Um, but we'll see that f we'll see that fight out. Um, What's your feeling? Do you think do you think uh, Chrome Mozilla may? Adopt some of the more lower level things, or yeah. What what are the flexibilities that IE is offering that Chrome and Mozilla are not? Um, it's just a lower level API, so it allows the developer to do a lot more with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, and a lot easier. So, for example, you know, when we look to interoperate um, with uh, with you know the native web RTC, everything's done in SD using uh, SDP, which is a session descriptor. Uh, protocol which defines the session between the media streams okay. and this is quite an old way of doing things and um, the Microsoft guys really didn't like this it, it means that there's it means that it's easier but it means that it's less flexible it's less f flexible with interrupt as well with uh, you know the existing uh, telecoms world the PSTN world I see um, so so from a Microsoft point of view they don't get enough credit for this and that is you no know, they are actually on board um, 
they do want to put it in uh, in IE as far as they they kind of letting out. Right. But no, they're not on board in the same sense as. Don't get me wrong. I li I like more control for the developers. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's great. Mm -hmm. But but honestly, if do you think Chrome and Mozilla may go the Microsoft route, or are we going to have a sort of a two a, another two, hor two I, I, horse two horse race? I really, I really don't know. I doubt um, it. I'm going to say on record here. No. I I doubt it, man. I doubt yeah. It. And also, where do the mobile browsers fit? Uh, well, that's a, that's a very good point, and let's actually uh, t touch on Apple quickly. So Apple oh, yeah. has yep. not made uh, Apple is probably the biggest single platform, you know, in iOS or you know going forward anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Apple have only put their name on one document, and that was a document, um, as far as I know, actually I should qualify that a bit, and that was a document arguing for H.264 over VPAs. Okay. Um, so you still have this, you know, the VPA H.264 argument, and that's not settled yet. Yeah. Um, so that was the only document they put their name on. Um, but I don't foresee, and this is just a, t a personal opinion, we, you know, on Monday, um, uh, Tim Cook may say, you know, we're going to support the WebRTC. You're you right. never know. Right. Yeah. But yeah. my yeah. gut feel on this is that they're not. And the battle mm -hmm. here is between Google, who, want the, who you know, they huge supporters of the web. You know, if, you, if you're on the web, you're using Google services, you're using Google search. Um, whereas Apple's biggest asset um, is probably not that they're a good handset manufacturer anymore. Or a good, I mean, that's obviously a huge asset, but I would argue that the App Store is more important. You know, look at the HTC One. It's almost as good as the, as the iPhone. Okay. Yeah. Um, the App Store is crucial. So for them to give up power to a, a browser-based technology doesn't fit in strategically for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you know, Google do no evil. Apple, you know, I also think Apple. You know, they're quite they're quite good at. Uh, at they like to control. They like to control right, because right. the end of user. Yep, yep, they yep. think the end user requires control. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. re requires you know the system to be controlled, and they kind of oversee all that. Right. So I don't think Apple are evil either. It's just two big juggernauts right. kind of pushing for what they want the future to be. Right. Of course. Um, and that is why I personally don't think that um, Safari will support um, uh, WebRTC. Safari uh, and iOS tablets. Is that, yeah. is that both desktop and mobile? Uh, I think so. Um, if you on the on the iOS side, um, let's talk browsers on on iOS. Uh, so on on the iOS side, um, you can't. Uh, as a browser developer, you don't have access to the low-level, uh, the low-level SDKs yeah. um, on Apple. Apple just don't expose that. Right. Mm -hmm. So Chrome is actually um, not much more than just the skin on yeah. top of Safari right. on oh, iOS. Right. Gotcha. And that's why Firefox actually came out and said, "Look, we're not even going to build a, 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 um, a client yeah. for yeah. iOS." What's the point? Yeah. 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 What's the point exactly? Yeah. Yeah, so point? Yeah. Google, uh, Apple control that. Uh, but what what you can do is uh, you can use a native SDK, um, mm -hmm. and that's something that AdLive offers. So we have a, a native mobile uh, iOS SDK okay. um, for our for our customers to use. So let, um, let's go let's go into your company. So obviously, a company like yours, you guys could be the intermediary. This is this could be actually very valuable that these guys never agree, because maybe you guys can come in and and become yeah. that glue for all this stuff. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, we're kind of in in in, in uh, like stuck between a rock and a hard place in a way. All right, let's um, hear it. You know, we obviously want the WebRTC ecosystem to thrive, right? Uh, but we also like to fix issues. Okay. Um, so if you look at you know, so we have an uh, an iOS SDK. Okay. Um, Google will also uh, uh, provide a native WebRTC SDK at some time in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but from our point of view, there's still uh, a lot that we can do to support the ecosystem. Um, one of the main things is multi-party. So we offer a, uh, a multi-point conference unit. Oh, yeah, I see that. I'm looking at it right now. Yep. Yeah, so that allows um, allows developers to uh, have multi-party conferences okay. rather That's than great. just one-to-one, because WebRTC <laughs> is just a one-to-one -one technology. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. We, pro- we provide the cloud infrastructure for that. Okay. We have servers all over the world. Um, we have customers in Japan. You know, we've just signed on a, a customer who's doing a, a, a very lo- a, a large amount of minutes with us now. Okay, so, uh, so r- really briefly, if we wanted to build our own branded Google Hangout, mm-hmm. our own thing that's very similar to Google Hangout, we could theoretically do this using your multi-party service. Am I hearing that correctly? Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, so you could do that, you know, you could go to, if you go to our demo rooms, which yeah. is just demo.adlive.com, we'll go uh, a link of this of the site, and okay. uh, you can grab a demo room there. And that code is also available to our customers, so you could literally just grab that code from us, okay. and, you know, put your brand on it, and you could have your own Hangout. This is, this um, is very exciting, man. Very how, cool. how, how, so tell me about the company. Uh, how long have you guys been around? Are you profitable? Is this all bootstrapped? Mm-hmm. Mm. So good questions. Um, like I was saying, you know, back to uh, you know 2010 or whatever. So from there, we were building a product. Uh, we decided Flash wasn't good enough. We we're going to use this web RTC technology. Right. Um, and then we came. Uh, so we were building this product, but we kept hearing, we we're pushing it out. That we kept hearing, guys, like nice product, but we actually like the technology more. Um, and so, uh, after a couple of years of literally uh, iterating and just you know perfecting it, uh, in 2012 we finally decided. We started 2012. We finally decided. Okay, well, let's be the platform because everybody wants us to be the platform. Okay. Um, and uh, and that's how we kind of got started as as you know as Ad Live. We were then called Claudia. Um, we became Ad, Ad Live in August last year and founded our company. Moved it to. Uh, the U.S. because we had a lot of U.S. customers. Okay. Uh, you know they want you know HIPAA compliance and all the rest. So we're at Delaware Call, right. um, and we're busy building an office, uh, setting up an office in San Francisco. Okay. Um, in terms of funding, we raised about a million dollars in 2010. Whoa, a uh, million bucks! <laughs> that's that's fantastic, <laughs> man. Is this a yeah, is this, yeah, these are angels? Well, a couple of angels? Like, how did that happen? Tell, wait, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's let, let's yeah, let's, it's let's put on the brakes here. Let's put on the brakes because this is very important. You raised yeah. a million bucks. How did that happen, man? Was it just off of some early flash demos and a couple of engineers saying hey, we can build this oh, on WebRTC? Yeah. How, how did you get your first investors? How did you convince them? Yeah. But tell us more about that. So not not the traditional means. Um, so yeah. we had a, a very good product. It looked incredible. Okay. Um, we have a very good product design team. A lot of engineering is strong. Our product design is actually excellent. Okay. Uh, and we pitched this to a few angel investors who were uh, who are, I used to work with. Actually, I was in finance. Oh, I, um, and they had invested in, in a few other startups. So, so your they, background uh, is in finance. You're not a techie. Uh, I started off. I did computer science and maths and statistics at uni. Oh, I left okay. uni and did startups for three years. Okay. I sold a startup in two thousand and one. Oh, okay. Um, wow. And then I got into got into finance because uh, that's all I could find a job in at the time. That was two thousand and three. Okay. After spending a year traveling around the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, yeah, and then then into finance. And through that time, I was also angel investing. So. Not huge investments, but friends had ideas, and I right. always, once you've been bitten by the startup bug, you always want to go back to it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so finally, raised some money and just you know moved on. But uh, as a lot of founders can probably tell you, is you know we went through that money quite quickly, building the wrong product. Oh, mm. uh, oh wow! So it was actually in 2012, uh, end of 2011, when we we had to start bootstrapping the company again. Uh, and that's Whoa, another reason hold, why hold, hold on one sec don't go, right, so you got the million you built a product that you're saying was the wrong product what was the big mm-hmm. flaw there like obviously you guys had an idea of what the market wanted yeah. what, what went wrong so it was too close uh, to be honest it was too close to Skype um, it was called Say Mama uh, it was a really really cool product Say Mama it, that's the name yeah. of it <laughs> yeah that's cool um, I like so that we name. built it also in Flash, so we kept the UI in Flash, although the video mm-hmm. calling technology was a plugin. Okay. Um, and that caused a lot of problems with installing the plugin, like you know the Google mm-hmm. Hangouts plugin or okay. you know the AdLive plugin we use for the, un- the unsupported WebRTC browsers. Okay. You can do it in three mm-hmm. clicks. Hours you had to install these virtual cameras, and it was a bit of a nightmare. Oh, I see. Um, I see. But the product, it, it, there wasn't a big enough differentiator. It was a marketing product, so we'd right. need to take this product. And throw marketing dollars at it. Why? Why did you? Uh, do, why did you even go after? I mean, if you, uh, what was, 
if Skype is already there and it's doing well, what made you guys think, you know, well, let's let's get the million bucks. Let's do this. Let's copy Skype. Like, why did, why even do that? Well, at, at the time, at, at the time, it was we were web based, and that was like our major differentiator. We were like web based, you much do it, better. Version do it in the browser. Skype. Do it in the browser. We did, yeah, and we also had we had loads of features. So okay. we had recording. You could send video messages. Okay, that's cool. Um, you could record a conversation. So we had all these additional features. Right. And I still think it is a great product, and I think somebody will come out, you know, with WebRTC, come out with a product probably not too dissimilar using WebRTC technology. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay. I think there's still space for it. Gotcha, um, gotcha. But at the time... You, it required marketing dollars. And I, I, you know, I have to tell you, man, uh, uh, getting that m first million building product that uh, that nobody wanted or was having a hard time getting traction has got to be super disappointing, man. How did you, like, how did you, it like, was, oh, shit, yeah. we just burned through all this money. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, so, uh, to, to be fair, we didn't burn through all of it doing that. Okay. Um, right. We burned through a decent whack. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, we we pivoted, you know, with enough runway to okay, that's good, that's good. All right, continue. Right. Obviously, um, <laughs> I was going to say, oh my god, like, it, all right, it, so, so, oh, so we can say maybe halfway. You're like, oh, wait a minute, this isn't working. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Or we'll say like a third way. We're like, okay, wait, like maybe this is what we should be doing. And then by halfway, it was like, okay, guys, okay. Pivot. gotcha. All right, cool. So you pivoted. <laughs> um, you pivoted. To, mind, yeah. Pivoted early, which which is why we're still here today. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. All right, so yeah. this is. Uh, and did you pivot to Ad Live? Is that your pivot? Yeah, so we pivoted to a company then called Claudia, actually. Claudia, okay. Um, which uh, we changed name to because uh, there was a Finnish company with the same name. Oh, I see. Okay. So we were Claudia only for about six months, and then moved to Ad Live. We actually closed down the UK business and opened up the US business. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was a. It's been a really interesting journey. I mean, you speak to any fun founders out there. Everybody has a founder story. Right. It's been very tough at times. You know, you wake up one morning, and Skype is integrated with Facebook. You know? Yeah. 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 The time. And you're like, time, oh shit. <laughs> Or, yeah, exactly. Uh, looking back on it, I mean, it didn't make a difference, but you still mm -hmm. get that sinking feeling in your stomach. I know, I know. Yeah, looks, yeah I listen, man, iOS, the, you know, they've got a big conference coming up. You're like, oh, I don't exactly. know what they're going to announce. Is this going to yeah. kill our business? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You, you sit there like half, like super excited <laughs> right. about what they're going to be announcing in half right. with like a sick feeling in your stomach. They're just right. gonna, well, you know, FaceTime. Yeah. Or <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so where I see your guys' product fit, you're enabling developers. So um, some of the products you talk about, like FaceTime or Skype and Facebook, like mm -hmm. I've never used that. I don't know anyone that's ever used that. Um, or even FaceTime is so clunky and difficult sometimes. It's a consumer product. I really think that what you guys have is empowering other websites, other brands, like bigger products, uh, which I think is great. Um, you know, <clears> the <throat> Hangouts we're using for this, it's great because it's free and accessible and all that. but. It doesn't fit into our website. Uh, oh, one of the things I was going to mention is Odesk. I always think is ironic that you go onto Odesk. There's this huge workforce. First thing that happens after you shake hands is you get on Skype, and yeah. it seems like most of the relationship that's a very good point um, through Odesk happens on Skype yeah. uh, as like a native channel. And I always thought that was sort of interesting that uh, Odesk was embracing that. Uh, it seems where. I'm sure they would love to integrate something like uh, WebRTC yeah. or AdLive into their so own actually, site. Yeah. They actually uh, uh, integrated with um, with TalkBox. Uh, TalkBox at the yeah. time were using Flash, though. Mm -hmm. and, and like yeah, I, I said, Flash just that. wasn't good really enough. Early on, and it was very yeah. terrible, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, Jeff, you're saying there the integration wasn't that good, or was it the quality of the actual product wasn't it's that great? Flash, it doesn't work. Oh. Yeah. Okay, mm. gotcha. I have to say, um, Kevin, th th this um, this whole you know being able to, to do video conferencing within the site, within the workflow, can be applied mm. to so many verticals. Forget about just ODES. If you want to do psychotherapy or you know therapy online, you know like psychology, whatever, um, yeah. shopping, marketing. I, I, it's, it's so many use cases of this. I, I just imagine this massive, ter massive amount of 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 uh, value that can be created if if all these browsers can just agree or if a guy like yourself can make it all work seamlessly mm -hmm. I, I, that's a huge potential for this the the mind really does boggle in terms of the use cases and we see you know i see uh, like what i was saying off air one of the best things in my job is speaking to founders looking to do cool things with the technology 
Um, and they really are varied. So I'm speaking to a couple of doctors uh, based in San Francisco. Okay. Um, they need, they have uh, nine locations in San Francisco. They do uh, uh, medical weight loss. Medical weight um, okay. A lot of their customers are actually based in New York. They, they serve, serve as celebrities and they actually want to fly their uh, their doctors from San Francisco to New York to uh, during the program. Oh, wow. um, so what they're looking to do now is to implement that directly in their workflow from mm -hmm. within their doctor's website. So this is a small team. It's a team of 10 people. Right. They can now service the entire country. Um, and it's not just, you know, that's one use case in the medical field. Um, we're speaking to other people um, in India who are, uh, are looking to implement the kiosk, a medical kiosk, because it's you know the villages are very far, can be very far from a doctor. Right. Uh, so they could go into a kiosk that's manned by a trained assistant rather than a doctor. Wow. Uh, and they can get they can get medical access that way. Wow. Um, another yeah. person also in this in the um, uh, in the, you know looking at the emerging markets, um, they've got a, a briefcase that you open up. Okay. Uh, and that has you know everything that they need, and this is for a patient that's been uh, has gone to a hospital. Now they need some outpatient care. Right. Um, so that's another use case. Um, second opinions. Even in the U.S., there's a lot of doctors. Um, there's a lot of in the rural areas. A lot of specialists just aren't there, so they don't have access to these specialists. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't live in a big city, and that's right. just the medical kind of vertical. Right. Um, we're yeah. speaking to um, lawyers who are looking to do some interesting things with court in the courts. Okay. Um, wow. Tell us, yeah. Tell us about that. You mean actually like in the courtrooms? Court? I, I, I can't tell you too much. Okay. Um, we are under NDA, but okay. that, but they're looking to make that process um, more efficient. Let's say. All right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's the. It's. It, it's. Oh it's my a great god! Tuesday. I tell you, this is like so huge. Am I wrong? I mean, this is so huge. No, it's, it's massive, and it's the, the amazing thing is that these the people those two examples that I gave these are lawyers doing it and doctors doing it right so they know the workflow it's not a tech a, a, you know an engineer sitting in London or San Francisco going hmm, what's the what legal problem can I solve right. you know right. these are the lawyers saying this is how it should be done right. this is the workflow we need yeah. this is how it is in the real world I'm going to replicate that online right. and mm -hmm. same with the doctors. Right. Uh, we're also speaking to a, a gaming company. Um, they do um, live uh, card tables. So there's literally an assistant there, you know, uh, uh, croupier standing there, you know, giving out the blackjack cards. Okay. Uh, what they find at the moment, and this is a totally different use case, it's a broadcast use case. Um, what they're finding at the moment is that it takes, it can take anywhere, you know, up to 15, 20 seconds for a live stream using Flash. Uh, to um, to get to the user, uh, so if you if you if you're watching you know YouTube or something like that or a live YouTube session, it doesn't matter. But if you're actually interacting, you know, playing cards, right. then it matters immensely. Okay. And what we can do with the WebRTC technology is take that 15 seconds down to 200 milliseconds. Wow! So it's instant, and we Great. can broadcast it to a thousand participants as well. That's wow. awesome! Um, Tell us about some more verticals. This is really exciting. Okay, another one, uh, auction, auction, live auction. Okay. Similar thing. So it needs yeah. to be live in the sense that even if they're not sending video back, and I right. think these verticals will eventually have, you can send your video back to the croupier and you can see the other guys you play in your blackjack come okay. your, at your blackjack table with. Right. Um, and, and same with the auction. You can see the other you know people in the auction. But the important here is the timing again. Yeah. So yeah. it's real-time communication. This right. technology is very, very different to... A, a usual streaming environment like live stream or or you stream even right right um, mm -hmm. and it, we can get it down to a few hundred milliseconds. Uh, how about education? Wow. Have you thought of? Have you seen any good use cases? People approaching you? Yeah, so education that's a, a huge vertical. So it's we kind of separate it into two different things, uh, two different verticals. The first is um, formal education. So this is schools and universities, you right. know, teaching math. Uh, we've got a customer um, who uh, produce a a great uh, whiteboarding tool um, uh, that they're busy deploying now in real uh, universities and in real classrooms. 
um, it's an excellent, excellent product. And they just, you know, it's a live whiteboarding tool, so the teacher can be anywhere and remotely send this to their, their, their students. But they just lack the video and voice bit, which is where we came in and we solved in that problem for them. Right. Um, so that's on the formal ed education space, and there's also obviously universities, and, uh, you know, we're speaking to a university in, 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 uh, in Australia, um, as well as in, in the UK. Um, but then also the informal. Uh, so we've got customers like Willow, who do gym training, um, okay. a few other people actually in a similar space, face-to-face, uh, -face, mm -hmm. Muyu, okay. um, uh, Gogo. Um, and then also, uh, you know, t teaching of musical instruments. That's right. also another big kind of right. yeah. Yeah. market, yeah. So yeah. we've got a company called Strum School. Strum School, okay. Um, uh, live uh, language training. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a, a company in France. Uh, they're doing live language uh, training. Um, so yeah, that's a uh, you know the education space, formal and informal, mm -hmm. are both you know massive, massive markets. Right. Wow. Oh, that's huge. There's so many opportunities. Uh, I mean, it's good. Yeah. Uh, how, yeah. How does how, so where does your company fit in terms of like how, do you just have a one-time payment to the developer or to the f startup or is it like a per stream cost? Like how does that work? So uh, what we do is we base we have. Uh, three different pricing models, and that's based on uh, what the user wants from us. Uh, and that's typically depending on their vertical and how they charge. So another v big vertical that we didn't mention is the enterprise tools. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so these are, um, you know, a Chatworks. Uh, they're, they're, they're a big customer of ours. All right. um, they've got, you know, uh, well over 150,000 users, I think. Wow. Um, Deployed already so using your stuff. Yeah, exactly. So they were text text based, and you could send files and all the rest. Wow, that's a lot mm -hmm. of that's a lot and of people, then, man. Yeah, and then in three weeks, they took they they video enabled their app. That's beautiful. All deployed, and and, and they, for the most part, I'm doing, assuming these are all enterprise. They're all using Chrome. Am I for the most part? Uh, so they use our plugin where there's no Chrome. Okay. Um, so they they. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, a, a massive market. And for them, uh, what makes sense is a per seat pricing model. Okay. Uh, for those, because they charge per seat. Um, okay. And then we also have a per minute pricing model. If a lot of our customers charge per minute, oh, I like that. Uh, so yeah. they'll charge. You know, the the, the oh, educational type tools they charge yeah. per hour. So I love it. Charge. I love that. Yeah. So it's just whenever oh, then they could just charge their extra on top of that. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Exactly. So they get it super cheap. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. prices we offer them are—I mean, it's—it's uh, it's, uh, because the technology is web RTC based. We haven't had to go through. You ha have employed a hundred engineers. You know, we've got a small team. Seven of us yeah, yeah. have been able to create a great platform. I love it. I love it. So, what's the bottom? What's the cheapest per minute I can get from you guys? What are we um, at? Well, we, one cent is kind of where we start, and then wow. we, we, we drop down from there depending on. I love it. But then our seat prices, you know, from month unlimited, you know, a dollar fifty, and then we drop down, depending on um, how cheap. Oh, this is uh, so great! You know, how, how many seats they so, want to so, buy from so us? So let's say here, I'm just going to throw this out. So let's say, Kavan, I decided uh, to to, you know, call all the different acting studios here in Los Angeles, in Hollywood, and say, hey, why don't all you acting teachers come on my platform where you can teach anybody that's in the middle of America that wants to move to L.A. That wants to become an actor, they can you know use our app, and you know obviously it's powered by Ad Live, and we could do it per minute. I mean, it, it sounds like it could be fairly cheap to uh, to at least use your technology, and then obviously charge my margin on top of that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It really does fit. Like uh, in terms of the numbers, we can we way below any other video conferencing provider. Hmm. Wow. Way below, uh, and that's another big disruptor. Is that this WebRTC is a disruptor in itself? You know, forget us. WebRTC in itself is a massive disruptor. Yeah, yeah. It's three hundred million dollars that Google has spent is now available to over a million JavaScript mm -hmm. developers. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so I'm going to throw this out here. So let's, if I if I wanted to adopt your technology, what would the key beyond, of, of course, branding it and all that kind of thing? Why wouldn't I choose a Google Hangout and say, you know what, we're going to do this acting permanent school over Google Hands. Why would I go with you guys? 
Well, it's the integration into your product. So it's keeping the obviously keeping the look and feel, keeping the brand, right. but also just. Um, we've actually got a customer who uses Hangouts. Well, they weren't; they were almost a customer, and then they decided to go to Hangouts. Okay. Um, and they've given us a list of things that they don't like about Hangouts. I love it. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't actually have them on me, but it's it's okay. basically it's very difficult to integrate into their workflow okay. mm-hmm. and onto their site. Okay. Um, to create a new Hangout and to yeah. you know, everybody needs a Google login, yeah, as yeah. well as their website login. Yeah. Um, so what um, you know, what WebRTC and and what we do is we we, we make that all totally transparent, yeah, totally for the seamless. End user. Yeah, yeah, I love Absolutely it. Absolutely seamless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if, this is this is part of actually a much bigger movement here, and this is something that you know I'm going to blog on soon. Okay. Um, okay. But it's part of communication is moving from being a destination to being a feature within context yeah. uh, within mm-hmm. an application. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. So in in the past. Uh, if you go way back, you know, it really was a destination. It was like a room in your house right. with a, you know, a, a, a dial phone. Right. And then it became a mobile phone, but it's still a destination. You still wanted to communicate. You pulled out your phone okay. and you used it. And then right. in the, you know, 2003, 4, 5, Skype started, but it's still a destination, right? It's yeah. a soft destination. Yeah. Right. Um, and what we're seeing is just this ubiquitous. You know, in context as a feature communication, that so, any this, application that requires real time right. can uh, can you know get it. Je- and Jeff, I don't know about you, man, but I just started like all this energy started happening in my brain right now. The synapses, <laughs> like yeah. uh, absolutely, just like we see a link, like we see a link or something that's part of content. Literally, video communication be part of the article, part of. Uh, the uh, the web itself, not so separated into Skype or something else, you know. Yeah, I'll actually give you one more quick um, web RTC uh, use case. So, and I love this use case because it shows the reason for not having a, a plugin. Okay. Um, so you logged into your bank account, right. and you want to query. You're looking at your statements, and you want to query something. Yeah. Typically, what you do now is you'd open up another tab, you'd search for the contact us number. You pull out your phone. You right. dial that. Yeah, yeah. You go through IVR. Push one to do this. Push two to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you'd be authenticated. So you'd have to, you know, give your details and mm-hmm. and, and go through the authentication process. Right. Now that process, we're speaking to you know a few retail banks. Um, that process can take seven minutes easily, and that's from you know when they get in, let alone actually finding the number. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. What WebRTC will be able to do, um, allow you to do, is you can click. Just you just click on the button, and you can instantly get put through to somebody. Right. Now the interesting thing here is one that's seamless. You don't have to find a number. You know right. numbers themselves are quite antiquated actually. Right. Um, but what's more important actually, or as important, is the metadata that can be sent along with that. Oh. Because you're in context, because you're in the browser, I know yeah. you logged in. You don't right. need to be re-authenticated. Yeah. Hi Kevin. Yeah. You know you've you you've, you've, you've yeah. hit the button. Yeah. First thing is, hi Kevin, how can I help you? Right. I yeah. see you looking at your statement. Yeah. Um, what? Which? Which transaction wow. can I look at? That is you brilliant. You don't get routed to. You don't yeah. get routed to. You know yeah. the lost card car yeah. team or the yeah. mortgage team. Right. Right. Or the loan mm-hmm. team. You get routed to your. The, the, you know your. Wow. Your, uh, God, that is. Team. This is huge, so man. So has user voice or anyone integrated this into their product yet? So we're speaking to we're speaking to a few people. Um, around the space, uh, and also speaking to contact space. center management companies, um, they uh, they love this technology. But dude, this is I mean, so. A, uh, th- yeah. There's a lot of you're gonna make a lot of money if you can execute on some of this stuff, guy. I could totally see it. <laughs> this could I, be huge. I think, I think I think there's a there's a huge market. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are playing in it. But fortunately for us, we have a a big advantage in that we've been working with this technology right from the start. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we understand it inside and out. Um, we've already got some big customers. We're already doing cu- uh, huge amounts of minutes on our platform. We deployed. Um, yeah. So that's uh, there's. Uh, it's, it's looking good for us. It's well, I really tell you, good. just yeah, keep great. it lean. Keep it lean. Don't start throwing money around everywhere. <laughs> well, let me ask yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> no, we, we are. We, we, uh, you've got, it's important to say no to things. We get asked to do a lot of stuff, and it's okay. really right. important. And, uh, yeah, I, I always think back to Steve Jobs when he came out with the, the iPhone and, or the iPad. He said, we actually started this before the iPhone and then realized, hang on, we can make this small enough for a phone. Right. So they shelved the iPad. Right. And this is like, you know, a a company of 
tens of thousands of employees. Right. They can only make one product at a time. And that's why I refocused purely on the platform. Some other people in the space, you know, they're looking to build a product as well as a platform. You know, right. you can use them as a video conference service right, right. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But us, we just focus purely on the platform, and we're not going to compete with our developers in terms of uh, in creating a whole other product. Right, right. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, very nice. Just, focus only on the on the platform. Yeah, I love great. that. Can you tell me a little bit about the infrastructure? Uh, you mentioned like twenty millisecond response time and stuff like that. How is that possible? Mm. Yeah. So. Um, typically uh, around 200 milliseconds, actually, um, yeah. but it can be a lot <laughs> lower. Uh, so we have uh, we have router, we have uh, multi-point control units, streamers all over the world. Okay. Um, what our technology does will actually route you via. So this is from multi-party call. Will route you to your nearest server. Mm. Um, so for example, our, cli our clients in Asia. Um, in Japan, you know, they're going to be speaking to other customers, other people in Japan. Right. Then they get routed via servers in Dallas or in in Ireland. Right. Um, so that's how we manage the latency for the multi-party. Okay. And then, uh, you know, we're about to see by nature is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Right. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer is yes. generally better. Uh, I got. I, I love that man. Peer-to-peer -peer, man. Yeah. I love it Go so ahead. much. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us how you guys are taking advantage of that, right? Is that save everyone bandwidth, or how's this? Uh, help us. Yeah, so it does save it, it does save people bandwidth, um, and also uh, the latency. I think is also the key thing. So what we do is we actually look at the best, so not the cheapest. But uh, you know, we look at the best. So if we're going to uh, actually routing sometimes on a good network, you know, Softlayer's network, and I've actually heard some good things oh, about wow. Google. You're using Softlayer, okay? So even if you go, you can actually sometimes go quicker. If you're talking about latency, yeah. quicker over via a server if you're traveling across the world because you jump onto almost Google's private, you know, worldwide network. Jump on that and get pushed straight across rather than you know hopping through, through uh, lots of servers. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of how we get to latency. And the other things with the latency that's important: the encoding speed. Sure. Uh, you know, VP9 at the moment is only doing two-pass encoding. Okay. Uh, later this yeah. year, it's going to do one pass, real time optimized. Wow! But it's very, it's quite different to have a to to encode a video for YouTube. You know, you kind of upload and it takes ten minutes to encode yeah. it. Right, right, you right. kind of run over it twice. Right. You know, there they're optimized for minimum uh, size. Okay. Uh, qu for a given quality, they want to minimize size. Okay. For us, right. we want it needs to be quick. We want to optimize for those kinds right. of things, but right for speed. Yeah. Than, you know, 300 milliseconds is actually too, um, it starts to get too long. Anything over 800 milliseconds is actually makes a real time conversation very difficult. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, what's your thoughts about uh, chat roulette, uh, peer to peer? Uh, do, you, mm -hmm. do you see uh, the next five years, we're going to see some very tight vertical chat roulettes that are really going to uh, take off? I think the, the, the great thing about chat roulette before it became. Uh, Penis what roulette. What it is now? <laughs> a bit of a, a nude show or whatever. Right. I actually did some stats myself on it. I think I did. I did fifty. I looked at fifty. I went to fifty sessions. Of those, thirty were men. Right. Uh, Fifteen were girls. Five were um, groups. Okay. Of those, I think the thirty men. There were, there were twenty naked men. <laughs> of the fifteen, the, of the fifteen girls, there's one, you know, semi-naked. Girl, okay. um, and then there are no naked groups. So I mean, that's what chat roulette is. But the amazing thing about chat roulette was, you know, just being able to meet somebody online that you yeah. never have met. So right. it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. introducing you. It's, it's it's removing geography as a barrier yeah. to yeah, yeah, yeah. to meet people, like-minded yeah. people. Yeah. That's right. Um, and like you say, around vertical. So why can't I meet other mountain bikers? Why can't yeah. I meet? Other, uh, you know, chess players or yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever that vertical is, right, and have right. a, a real conversation, a face-to-face -face conversation. Yeah, right. And people in the past have, you know, when we first started out, we had to sell video. People, people were, mm, well, I don't think I'll do video conferencing. It doesn't really make sense to me. Right. But now, obviously, with Hangouts and all the rest, it's become very popular. Right. And people realize, like, if we were doing this just audio. It would be a very different experience than you know this video conversation. Yeah, it yeah. adds a huge amount in, yeah. in terms of you know the personalities and uh, communication. Right. Um, so certainly, different verticals uh, will adopt. Uh, I, th I think making you know, 
sounds cliche or whatever, but it's truly making the world a, spe- a smaller place and that you can meet other like-minded individuals. What do you mm-hmm. think happened with Sean Parker's big, huge airtime splash? Like, he had all these celebrities come on. Like, what happened? Yeah. What's your, what, what, what went wrong? I didn't, I mean, I followed it, but I didn't use airtime myself. Um, I tried it once or twice. Um, I think the first thing was they used Flash, and I did actually yeah. ping them beforehand. <laughs> you did? Just on, okay. on LinkedIn. I don't really cool. expect a, a, okay. you know, a Marco or Sean Fanning to, to get back to me, but <laughs> I did say look, the Flash technology isn't isn't that great. Okay. Although it had gotten better by that stage, to be honest. You know, 2010 was terrible, by mm-hmm. then it was better. Right. Um, so I think that the technology, the technology, I'm sure, was a yeah. problem. And I remember, you know, at their event, at their live event with, I think it was, was it Jim Carrey? Or, yeah, you know, Jim Carrey, yeah. Jim Carrey was there, yeah. Um, uh, and it didn't work. Yeah. You know, so yeah. this reliability is huge. And people yeah. don't understand how difficult reliability in real-time communications is. Yeah. Uh, you know, different networks, different, uh, you know, proxies and nets and firewalls and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, and then I think probably the, the second part, the second problem was maybe that it was, and I didn't explore this too much, but maybe that it was too random. Um, kind of the chat roulette was extremely random, right. but you know you just you just showed up and you watch somebody play a guitar or right. you know something interesting. You didn't really become, as far as I know, you didn't really become friends with people. It was just kind of random. Yeah, like yeah just random stuff. Yeah. Random. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think airtime is about a longer form. So we actually sit down and have a conversation. Right. And I think right. that can also be a bit awkward, maybe. Right. Um, I, th- I think what the key is there is probably, like you said, do it around a vertical. Okay. So we founders, you know, let's have a founder stories, right. you know, hang out like right. this or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And not necessarily put it on air, but just have a chat, you know. Right. <laughs> share, right. our, uh, share our founder stories. So somebody like me, a meetup. Right. Would do very well to extend their platform from yeah. being live to yeah. uh, virtual as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I have to tell you, man, there's going to be so much money in all of this stuff, man. I just, this is uh, Jeff. I don't know about you, man, but uh, th- this is like super exciting. Yeah, I mean, this is just going to power so many apps. I came from a health and weight loss kind of uh, product before, where we were definitely looking at this stuff. We were I, that's where I tried Talkbox. Right, we want to integrate that because there's a clear need to get expert advice connected to people mm-hmm. online. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've been looking at that space for a long time, and it certainly this is this is going to help uh, tremendously get people the, the live faces and uh, real time communications. Uh, mm-hmm. There's just there's so much serendipity to it, and so much uh, that we can learn. I think it's uh, really great. Absolutely, absolutely. So, what is uh, what's your roadmap here? The next six months, next uh, next twelve uh, twelve months. What 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 what's what's next for Adelaide? What what's going on? Well, the the, the um, major thing is just to focus on the WebRTC angle to our platform and just making sure we cover you know the Chrome native implementation, Firefox native implementation when that comes out. Okay. Um, work on the mobile SDKs. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, really, just focus. I don't want to give too much of our roadmap away. Come on. But really, just focus. <laughs> give us the really, juice. just focus on, on the on the platform. Well, okay. the two reasons why I don't want it is one, okay. it's changed quite often. Okay. So we'll get a customer who comes in and says, "Kevin, we love your product, but right. you know, we want this feature, right. um, and we're happy to pay for it." So we're like, "Okay, cool. We'll go develop it for we'll, you. We'll build it." Um, so that will change our roadmap. Yeah. Uh, and that's you know I don't really I don't really put too many stakes in the ground, but okay. I mean just focusing on the platform uh, is crucial on you know the reliability and stability, uh, improve video. We'll certainly look at uh, you know adding in VP9 when Google does that. So we'll add that in across all our all our all our SDKs. Okay. Um, we're going to do a pro- we're going to do recording. Um, oh, very yeah. nice. Yeah, so that's a. And that, is this recording going to just sit on S3 and you guys will charge by the megabyte for re- replay, or how does that work? Uh, yeah, so that's um, that's that's interesting. We've actually had we've been speaking to customers already about this, and some of them want a hosted solution, and others want to keep the data themselves. It really does depend on the industry. Gotcha. Um, so uh, I love this recording thing. Both services. I'm sorry. Say that again. We'll probably provide both. Okay. You know, both on premise as well as as hosted. I really like this. What? what do, uh, when can we expect something like this? Are we talking about three months from now? Six months? Yeah, three to six months. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, recording yeah, sessions so I think could be really, really big because uh, obviously that could tie into the paying for the minutes and you get the session and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, and and yeah, yeah. So that's 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 a, a, a another big part of what we'll be building out. Um, also, things like uh, basic interrupt with the PSTN world, so SIP gateway, that kind of thing. That's also on the roadmap. Okay. So people could potentially dial into a voice meeting if required. Oh, very cool. Okay. Very cool. I have so to say, uh, it landing. sounds like you guys are going to be blowing up, man. If you just keep focusing and keeping this thing reliable and easy for developers to integrate, uh, yeah. who are your big competitors? Is there anybody competing in your space that you are looking at? Uh, they're, they're getting. They're, they're starting a few. Obviously, the big one is uh, is Topbox. Okay. Uh, they come from a kind of over the top uh, approach. You know, they've uh, with Flash. They also had, you know, let Flash do all the hard work, and then they kind of provide an API on top of that. Right. Where we differ, um, and they'll do a similar thing, I think, with with WebRTC. Where we differ is that we own the entire media stack. Okay. Um, so every line of code we have access to and we work on, we actively work on. That's cool. Um, which allows us to do special things, uh, you know, good things with, for our customers. Gotcha. Uh, you know, yeah. keeping ahead of the curve in terms of, you know, all these other features, uh, traffic shaping, doing all these cool algorithms to make sure that, you know, each user's endpoint is optimized. Okay. Um, yeah, all that, kind of, all that kind of stuff. It just gives us more, um, m much deeper access to all the technology. Gotcha. Yeah, so, uh, so you're doing if, all the heavy lifting for the developers. It's great. Yeah. yeah what I are some think. of the best ways to reach out to developers and get people the, to know that you guys are there and available as a tool to plug into their apps? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a very good point, and it's something that we're not very good at. Um, so I've talked at a few conferences. Uh, they're kind of enterprise-y conferences, not startup conferences. Yeah. Um, and most of it's word of mouth, to be honest. You know, we get inquiries in every day. Um, because you're, because I'm assuming your your end users or your customers aren't putting powered by ad live. It's, it's there's it's all white labeled. Yeah. So um, we do sometimes, you know, on the plugin install. If somebody needs to install a plugin, there's a little powered by ad live. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to bring out a a, a a project like that that will have you know powered by ad live badge. Okay. Um, yeah, have, there you go. Is there a freemium? Maybe there's a freemium version of this, possibly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's another thing that's, yeah, we're looking at. At the moment, we, um, we're we focusing on on the business and the platform and getting the business stable okay. uh, and the platform stable. Okay. And then when we're happy with that, then we'll... Uh, you know, push out hard to the rest of the, the developer community. I'm assuming you guys want to go after some of these successful startups, maybe doing support, helping them in integrate WebRTC for the support, or, you know, um, yeah, so it definitely sounds like startup community could be a good place for you guys. Yeah, it's 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 important, I think. You know, Twilio are the guys who have done really, really well with oh, yeah. this, right? Yeah, they're huge. You know, yeah. It's, it's your marketing. You don't have a yeah. marketing budget. You don't need advert to anything your marketing is developer evangelists and yeah, conferences yeah, i completely yeah. agree so can i make a suggestion um, if you don't mind contests create some contests create some prizes yeah. yeah we've been speaking to a few people around that actually okay uh yeah so watch this space we're not quite ready to you know open full scale and okay. just you know push it hard um right. i think we've got a few things we want to do with the platform first and being focused will benefit everybody in the long term Okay. Um, but certainly in the future, you know, uh, watch the space. We'll be doing a lot of that. Okay. Uh, and uh, in terms of additional funding and all that kind of thing, are you guys pretty much, uh, you know, are you guys pretty much uh, break even now? You're making a little bit of money. Are you looking for more money? Or where where are you at with that? Yeah. So we, uh, like I said, we got we got so we got some funding in a while back. Um, we're still using that, and we're profitable. Okay. We're profitable in Q1. Oh, awesome! You're um, profitable. Done. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, which is great, but we still, you know, you still fight the good fight every day, which okay. is great. It means that, I mean, this is slightly aside, but in November we had an opportunity to go raise money at Series okay. A. We already had some traction. And oh, really? Raise. Okay, and and you turned it um, down? Well, we didn't. We hadn't engaged, you know, um, fully with uh, VCs, but okay. that was kind of what people were saying. You know, go raise a Series A and get the money and, and do it that way. Right. But at the time, we were speaking to customers already, so we thought, you know, let's let the customer dictate the future of this business, not okay. an investor. We raise money beforehand, yeah. and 
it probably, I mean, obviously it was good to have it. Right, but right. On one side, it also kind of slowed us down yeah, in a way because yeah, yeah. we worked on the wrong things. Yeah, you worked on the wrong thing. You weren't close to your customer. Yeah, yeah so yeah, this yeah. customer validation is yeah. crucial. It's critical. And yeah, being yeah, a, yeah. And being a bootstrap startup is, right. you know, speaking to customers. Yeah, speaking to customers, it. building what they want instead of what you think they yeah. want. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. crucial. And I yeah. think, you know, as advice, and I've spoken to other, you know, entrepreneurs and founders out there, yeah. like my advice is bootstrap as far as you can. Right. Um, right. Until you found that product market fit. Yeah. yeah. Um, Great advice. If you do rate, raise money, just make sure that you all that money is being spent on the right things. Right. You know, that's right. But there's nothing more like survival to make you, you know, yeah. go out and, and actually right. work hard. And, right, right. And, yeah. Yeah. market fit yeah you know, not within the next three iterations but in the next iteration absolutely you got to stay hungry got to stay hungry yeah 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 and it's been the right decision we've had a few VCS you know approach us um, probably later this year we'll look to raise uh, once okay. everything's kind of settled down and we've got uh, well in terms of you know the platform and exactly where we are and the, uh, and you know the positioning and all the rest gotcha um, you know when we really just need you know a bit of petrol to pour on the fire Right. Um, that's that's when we look to. Uh, you know, I, I have to tell you, I think contests could be really big. Get the developer, mm -hmm. JavaScript developer community excited. It'd be really great to see a lot more case studies. Um, all of that that's kind right. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. All that kind of thing. Maybe yeah. a monthly hangout or a monthly WebRTC version of a hangout with all your top uh, startup guys. You know. Uh, that would be a great idea. Yeah. Unfortunately, the thing is at the moment is I'm the I'm the marketing. <laughs> Uh, I'm the marketing, sales, finance, right. product, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, Jeff and I talk about this all the time. With limited resources, every decision matters. Like yeah. every day counts. Yeah. It's like yeah. I, you have 400 things I could do tomorrow. Like what is that one out of 400? Yeah, what's the most important? What's yeah. the priority list? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where is the biggest yeah. ROI? Yeah, I know it's a tough yeah. one. That is tough. Yeah, yeah it is. But it you're is. right. You know, pushing the marketing side, as I said, it's not something we've been that good at, and we're certainly going to look to improve as we as we progress. And, and let me let me get this straight, just for any developers that are watching this. So the the only reason, or the biggest reason, to go with you know with you guys versus writing your own, you know, doing mm -hmm. it yourself you know, with WebRTC is you guys provide. The stability, the low latency, uh, and reliability of all these connections. Am I hearing that correct? Well, it's 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 mostly around uh, the kind of two things. Uh, the first is also, let's call it three. The first is about ease. Uh, so with WebRTC, you need to um, you know you need to have a server. You need to provide a signaling protocol. Okay. Um, you need to have a turn server. Uh, we provide that cloud infrastructure for you. Okay. So a turnkey solution. You don't need to get into details. Okay. On the same ease of use, our APIs are abstracted. A higher level, um, so it's e it's easier to use the WebRTC APIs. Although they not quite as low level as Microsoft, right. we want them to be, but they still are quite difficult. Gotcha. Um, and we provide we also provide widgets on top of that to make it even easier. Okay. Um, so that's point one. Uh, second point is multi-party. Uh, so we provide a multi-party right. conference right. unit without uh, having this kind of technology. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't be able to do multi-party. You'd only be able to do one-on-one. -on -one. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, coupled with that is our ability to traverse uh, corporate networks. Okay. So we've worked really hard on supporting proxies, authenticated proxies, um, and other uh, NAT and firewall traversal mechanisms. Gotcha. Wow. Um, uh, and then uh, finally, uh, platform support. So we su we support iOS, Android, as well as native. Uh, desktop SDKs, and we've gotcha. actually got quite a few customers who want native desktop SDKs. Gotcha. Um, simply because in a pr you know in a communications environment, having presence and having it always loaded makes a lot of sense. Gotcha. Um, so for this particular <laughs> use case, you know, like that's why Skype's so good at being a desktop application. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, I don't think Skype would be the same if it was a web app. Right. I mean, it's just not always open. Notification systems not that great. Right. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Gotcha. No, that totally um, makes sense. Yeah, and then also support and and and, and that kind of stuff. Um, we also offer an analytics dashboard. So oh. every conversation, uh, we record all the statistics from there. Uh, okay. I mean, thousands of statistics per conversation, okay. and we score every conversation with a mean opinion score. It's okay. a number from one to five that represents how good that score was. Right. So if 
you get a customer coming back to you saying they had a problem. Right. They can have a look at that. They can diagnose that problem. Was it a is it a low CPU usage? Okay. Is it their low bandwidth? Mm, gotcha. Or, gotcha. Um, wow, that's great. And then they can also ping that back to us. Gotcha. So we really provide like a comprehensive suite uh, to take WebRTC, which is still in, in its infancy, right. uh, but deploy it today. That's kind of our sweet spot. It's like you yeah. want to deploy WebRTC today. Right. We can do it, and then gotcha. not, there are not many other people who can do it. Well, I actually wow. don't know of anybody else who can deploy it to our level. Wow, that's so great. That the biggest yeah. players. That's so great. I have to tell you, I know a lot of developers, Jeff included, oh, we, they all want to use open source and they want to support mm -hmm. technologies like WebRTC. So, Jeff, what do you think? Jeff, uh, is this something that you would yeah. you'd totally use? Totally awesome. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've looked at uh, messing with some of the you know, open source WebRTC stuff. Uh, I think you mentioned the HTML rocks article in your blog, I noticed. And yeah, that's so right. I've been hacking and testing and trying to see, wow, is this really going to work, you know, and right. pull it up on my two machines. And uh, what you just addressed and really compactly explained to us, you, you solve so many problems that as a developer, I'm just not ready or wanting to or mm -hmm. capable of solving, you know, traversing yeah. proxies, not my, you know, not my thing. <laughs> Uh, or you know, trying to like spending a lot of time setting up multi-party, not my mm -hmm. cup of tea. You know, I just kind of want to get the product running. You know, I want to spend time focusing on the front end, not on developing the back end of it. So I think that you guys do all that heavy lifting that really uh, may seem trivial, but the stability is so huge, like yeah, you said. Yeah, and so knowing massive. that it's going to work right out of the box is a, a tremendous effort. I really applaud you guys uh, for having such a great product. Yeah. And, and and just to be clear, uh, a startup can get in for very uh, very small amounts. We can do a per minute thing. What's the, what else is the lowest? Uh, what what's a, a a a small budget you'd recommend for for a startup to approach you guys? The lowest. So budget. we actually have we actually charge. Um, you can look at our website. Our minimum pricing tier at the moment is three thousand dollars per month. Okay. Um, so it's a, it's it's not made for all the kind of smaller developers. Right. Um, at this particular moment, but that's not to say we, I don't have any announcements. But you know, we obviously want to support it at the moment. Like I said, we're just focusing on getting a platform down, and when we're ready, we'll push the go button. I I have to tell you, three thousand a month for a lot of bedroom developers is way too much. So I yeah, honestly hope absolutely. you guys do offer yeah. a, a smaller a tiers for little guys that are trying to build something very cool. Yeah, no, we certainly will. We certainly will. But this is back to, you know, getting the biz business in a good shape, yeah. uh, and getting and getting uh, getting the platform in a good shape before opening it up. Okay. Like you don't want to just push go to thousands of people right. immediately. It just sucks out entire teams' resources. We actually yeah. did that to, to begin with. Okay. Um, so we thought, you know, let's take a step back. Let's get some, you know, some of the bigger customers on board. Right. Uh, they can, you know. Uh, Help us to develop the, the, the platform out, okay. and then as soon as we uh, as soon as we're happy, then we can push the uh, the go button. Which, like I said, no announcements, but it's not in the, it's it's not going to be too long. Okay, when cool. you say not too long, we're talking three six month time time window. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're yeah. here to hear, guys. Three to six months from today. <laughs> June, we can expect a much smaller buy-in for the for those guys that are watching that want to create a cool guitar strumming app or with WebRTC built in or some other fun thing like that. Am I right? Yeah, and maybe even sooner. Actually, we 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 busy we busy discussing this internally. Okay, good. So I'll have yeah. to let you I'll have to let you guys know when, uh, <laughs> when that happens. Yeah, we'd love to you know announce it on the show and talk about it because I think this is just such a great product. Obviously, we're all about startups, and we love to see how. Yeah. Uh, how how easily we can get you know our feet wet and try it. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be really awesome. Like like I think your approach is great. Like not letting the whole world in right now for free or whatever. But uh, it, you know with Amul's idea of a contest. You know I'm thinking maybe like an open source. You know like getting people to contribute some open source example code. You know like experimentation. You know like yeah. oh we tried a you know we made our own uh, uh, chat roulette with yeah, it yeah. over the weekend. You know and and yeah. uh, you know of course they're not going to be a long term customer maybe. But it's right. cool to get people to try. Things and just like up, you know, put the yeah. code up on yeah. online. Yeah. Uh, so I think that would be really nice to have. But clearly, you guys have paying customers, which is a yeah. beautiful. Yeah, model. yeah. No, no, there's uh, no question. You guys are profitable. You're making money. Yeah. You're not. You're not begging for money from VCs. It's a beautiful. And, thing. and I mean, your 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 customers are making money off of it too. So it's really just makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 
so, the, so the key, I suppose the key here is, you know, we're a startup, and every time I get a startup calling me saying, uh, you know, Kevin, we'd love to use you, and, you know, this is what we're going to be doing, it breaks mm -hmm. my heart to say no to people. It really does. Right. I mean, I'm that person. I was that person, you know, a year ago. I'm still that person. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. we, we certainly won't ignore that. You know, that's what we want. That's, that to us is, you know, the, the end goal. Right, uh, but it's kind of how you plot your way there. Right, right. Um, yeah, no, I, I think the way you're you've chosen to do it this way. Yeah. yeah, that's the stable route. You know, like you know, I hate to bash anymore on Talkbox, but using them, giving giving it the first shot, I was just like, okay, I'm done. You know, I kind of lost the credibility in them uh, after yeah. that experience. So I think it's important that you guys have the stability and the support yeah. to back up the product. Yeah, before absolutely. You, yeah. Before you let thousands of hackers exactly, and exactly, you, you only get you only get right. one chance to make a first impression. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. No, you, he's, you're absolutely right. Yeah, you got to make sure the stuff is stable. The last thing we want mm -hmm. is something that's not working. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, I have to tell you, uh, Kevin, it's been like incredible having you on, man. I, it was a little bit of back and forth earlier on when we were trying to get you on, but but it's yeah, been. Sorry about that. That was totally my fault. No, no, no. I, I have to tell you, man, it's been totally worth it. I, I Jeff and I, I don't know, but I know Jeff's been excited to have you. Definitely. Um, you know, we're we're really I, we're bullish. We're both of us are totally bullish on WebRTC, man. And now that we've had you on, I think you guys are going to become a very successful company. Just uh, don't sell out to the big man. Uh, just try to stay no. as independent as possible, please. We will. Yeah. Cool. And look yeah, out for the little guy. And is there anything that you are you're looking for? Um, are you guys look, are you guys hiring anything like that? Yeah, we are hiring. Uh, so we're looking for good engineers. You can be based anywhere in the world. <laughs> we were actually thinking about maybe centralizing the offices, but. You know, it's worked for us so far. If you can, if uh, wherever you want to code from, you know, we don't mind. That's awesome. Um, actually, one of our one of our coders, Akuba, he's a digital nomad. He codes from from hostels awesome. uh, while he's traveling the world. He's been in Morocco and then Spain, and, but he's a great coder. So that's all we need. We that's we just awesome. want people who are great coders. That's so great. Uh, I love it. Yeah, so that, that's certainly something we're looking for is a uh, great experienced awesome. uh, engineer, C plus plus. Engineers, uh, especially. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. Well, uh, thanks again for coming on. We're definitely going to be in touch um, because uh, I would love to use your technology. Um, mm -hmm. I'd love to build a relationship with you guys, man. You guys are great. Uh, perfect. Well, thank you very much for have, having me. Um, and if you if you want me back anytime, just just ping me and. Oh, uh, we're, we're definitely going to have you back. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah we'd like to try to get in touch with our startup three or six months down the road, but we're really anxious to hear about your announcements and yeah. uh, when okay, so all of our we'll, startup audience can start. Okay, what we'll do is we'll uh, when when we're ready to announce something, then we'll uh, I'll, I'll pin you guys and we can do it live on a on, on a show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be that, that'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be really great. Well, thanks again, Kevin. I really appreciate your time, man. Uh, th thank you, guys. Okay. All right, our pleasure. Bye. Cheers.